the one of the most important things in a cloning chamber is that the humidity be able to be a hundred percent that there be subdued light in most cases like 20 hours a day you're not expecting these plants to actually grow in a cloning or reproduction chamber you expect them to recover from the injury of being cut and set roots right now what you see is there's two rock wool cubes they could be replaced with that you could put a hundred tiny cubes in there if you were going to start seeds you could actually put a small seed bed in there point is the average plant will take a number of weeks to set roots and it's important that it be a sterile environment so these are not porous in any way and they can be cleaned you can take the tray and you can move them around this system has worked very well for me no matter what I was trying to propagate no matter how many samples I had or how few and in some of my other stuff I've been working with orchids in some cases you could use this and I've used it to use, uh, you use a nutritive gel and you put it in there and you can actually take a paper punch, a sterilized paper punch, and punch a piece out of a leaf and put it on this gel. And if you wait long enough and you're patient enough, it can actually set roots and grow. That's truly what I consider to be a cloning station. What most people are calling a cloning station today is really just a rooting station, a propagation station. Almost all orchard products are their genetic clones anyway they're just from cuttings so what's the big deal